Hello, everyone, and welcome to Intentional Guy. We have a new segment today on called On Air, Let's Talk. This is, uh, this is a new format that I want to uh, be interviewing different people. Today, I have Christian Bolin with us. How are you doing, Christian? Hey, doing great, Michael. It is so good to be with you. It is, too. Christian wrote a, a fabulous book called Jesus Christ, His Life and Mine. The story of Jesus and how it applies to us in the Twitter era, and I I finished it today. And <laughs> awesome! <laughs> it, it was um, I I I got the audible version of it because I, me and Christian we've talked uh, earlier and um, came across each other, and so I've been listening to an audible book, and and I'm going to tell you I am going to purchase uh the the paperback of it or whatever you have of it because mm -hmm. um, this is one of those books that i'm probably going to read a couple times a year uh, and i want to go back in you know on audible you can't highlight right all these things and there are so many nuggets uh in your book that for me that i was like man i, I you know, I was driving, huh. so I couldn't write them down um, <laughs> and stuff like that. And there's there were so many uh, nuggets in there that I that I wanted to to get. And that's great to hear, oh, you wow. know, to to get a little bit of background on me. Um, you know, intentional guy started just a few months months ago. Uh, we're doing very well. I wrote a book called exposed that went out and um i sent i sent christian that audible book yeah. but i have in the in the last year have found uh full restoration after 15 years of being a slave to if you want to call it that um to guilt and shame mm -hmm. and i have found full restoration since coming out of that I have nothing but pure joy of wanting to share now yeah. how God has restored me because I never saw that modeled for me, not to the degree that I fell. I never yeah. Christian saw um, anyone come out of that. So I felt that it was impossible for me because I never saw that grace applied in such a harsh reality yeah. you know, that I went and through. Boy, boy, was it harsh. Uh, I'm so grateful that you shared your book with me, and uh, I, I got to tell you, it was a gri gripping, riveting story, and so well told, and so powerful, and so important. I have begun sharing it widely, as widely as I can. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that stood out to me, you talk about the, the slavery and the complete restoration. One of the things that was so important to me in your story is the consequences of not having a correct understanding of the gospel and the message and the joy that's available in Jesus Christ, this utter hopelessness. I mean, I come from a, a woolly background where I made some very poor choices. I'm a recovering drug addict. Um, you know, it was a relatively short time in my life and other, other mistakes and so forth, but I'm so grateful that I was raised in an understanding where repentance was a good thing. The repentance meant yes. that God allowed you the opportunity to change and that true forgiveness and restoration. And I love how you focus on restoration, that it's, that it's, you know, restoration says you can be brought back to a whole state. We don't talk about that enough, but you've made that a focus of your book, which is really, really powerful. And, and to see the, the, the dangerous and harmful consequences of what you experienced by not feeling like God could forgive you and love you and that you weren't worthy to serve anymore because of the past. I mean, here's living proof of how damaging that is to a person and how, how much we need to remember this importance of being non-judgmental and always emphasizing the positive aspects of the gospel. It was in, an incredible story. And I'm so glad that to, to have met you. And to be here with you, I, I, I'm just, I know God's going to be with us on this interview. I'm just so excited. Well, I appreciate it. Well, and you know, this started, uh, the, 
the restoration period before I was uh, so in my past, I could tell you on one hand how many books I have written. Okay, in the last two years, I can't tell you how many books I've I've read. I, when I said written, I could I can tell you how many on one hand how many books I have read. Right. Um, I I haven't written a lot of books. I've written that one there, but um, <laughs> but I have read so much because I found that uh, how important it is what what you pour into yourself is what you're going to get out, right? Yeah. And it's so important, and, and it's also I I've been really um, careful with with who, what I read too, because especially at the beginning, because I was so vulnerable yeah. in my stage, even though I come from a background of ministry, I was realizing, and, and I don't know how to articulate this because I, you know, there's something about heart knowledge and head knowledge. And I had some head knowledge about who christ was mm -hmm. but when you don't have it fully modeled i came from where you're saved by grace through faith not by works but but yet even though we believe that that's not how we live that's not what our actions was because our works mm -hmm. were very important and then so as a preacher's kid i learned at an early stage um to live for other people to be a oh. people pleaser you know, oh, yeah. oh, and, my gosh. and that was such a crutch for me. What mm. I like now, I started off reading Stephen Furtick books uh, because I knew he was safe and yeah. I liked his preaching, you know, yeah. and um, and then I had a good friend of mine who taught me how to read because I felt stupid, felt like I didn't know how to read, you mm. know, and he gave me a tool on how. I, it, I take 15 minutes a day and do this practice. And now I, I, my reading is getting faster and I can mm. read faster than I can listen to an audible book. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm true. Stop that, 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 you know, that true. Um, but anyways, I want to get to your book because sure. uh, becoming intentional for me was a journey and my relationship with Christ is so important to me, you know, but what I realized was that the God I served back then, I had a wrong perspective of who he was. I knew who the vengeful God was mm -hmm. and all that. But what I really liked about your book was it was taking me through who Jesus was when he was here on earth, who he yeah. was as a man. You know, yeah. and even though he was God, he was man. And he set an example for us. He went through everything we went through and go through. Yes. He was tempted in, in every way. And of course, we're not God. I, you know, we, I, I, I cannot be perfect like God, but God, he showed us in his, in his, his life and his word and in his life. That and there was a lot of things. What I like is I can read through the Bible, but you, you know, you dig deep into this and you bring out a lot of things that personal who make it made Jesus more personal to me. Yeah, that's the goal. And I'm glad it came across that way. You know, the whole concept of this book, two things that really facilitated it. A, I had a very difficult time coming to true faith. And I love the title of your podcast and your, your brand, your theme of intentional. You know, we talk about it. And by the way, did, not everybody may know that the phrase believe on the name of Jesus or some slight variation of that is used like 28 times in the scriptures. It's very, very important. And if you ask, you know, the average Christian, do you believe in Jesus? Um, of course, they're going to say yes. And it's kind of like a check the box activity. But the real meaning of believing is based on this Greek word that it's a combination of believe, obey, and trust. It's like you're invested. It's like you just believe it. You, you accept it. You embrace it. You're going to live with it. I mean, it's a very rich word. And I didn't understand that. I didn't believe in Jesus that way. And the way that I came to experience that was very difficult and life-changing. 
But then gradually it let this light into my life that changed me. And I ended up, and it's interesting in our previous conversation, we've talked about us both working in corrections before. Yes. And uh, when I was working in juvenile corrections, uh, a pivotal moment happened when a young man was very frustrated and angry and told me that somebody had given him a Bible and he couldn't make heads or tails out of it. And he didn't right. read very well. And that's where this, this passion came to me. And I'm sure it was God inspired. Absolutely. Right. To, to make the life of Jesus understandable for pretty much any reader. And, and by the way, my professional training, which I got since that time, is in developing learning materials. That's what I do for a living. Mm. And so I believe that God prepared me with this craft to, to take the life of Jesus and make it understandable as a movie experience from birth to resurrection because he is the light of the world. I mean, as a Christian, what could possibly be more important than having a clear understanding of who Jesus is, what he taught, what his great example is? I mean, it's it was life changing for me. And so right. my passion was to tr try to put that into the hands of anybody, whether they knew anything about the Bible or not. So I'm just thrilled when I hear that that it worked for you. You know, Michael, it, I, I, really, I am. It, it made me. God more real for me because um like I said I'm on this journey of re it, it, God God has not changed I've changed and so now I'm pouring more of God into me and having a better relationship with him what I liked about your your book it helped me to it 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 has enhanced my relationship with Christ because how how do you have a relationship with someone if you don't know their background, if you don't know their walk, you don't know everything. And and it's it's so easy to say, give it to God. You know, it's so easy yeah. to spiritualize everything, you know. Right. But as I was reading your book, it, it, it made Jesus come alive to me, yeah. you know. And so therefore now my. It's made my my prayer time with god come more alive because one i can appreciate more of who he is in my life because right. even though i i knew most of what you wrote in there okay but there's a lot i didn't know because i didn't go into the background of jesus you know i i didn't know that he came from a large family i didn't know some of this the stuff you know and right. just just sometimes even the smallest details can change um for you you know yeah. it, it it's a, that paradigm shift and that's what i believe your book for me was was a paradigm uh it, it created a paradigm change for me on that's how i see who god is well, it, it's, it made all the difference to me before I wrote this book in the uh, early 90s. The trigger you know, event for me was reading a very scholarly, thick book that created this movie-like experience with all this background of the context, the history, the, you know, the Hebrew experience and what it was like. And it, everything just started to become a vivid reality. And what I found was that I was changing. I felt better. And I was more able, and that's, this is where that climbing wall analogy in the beginning of the book became right. very real right. to me, that, you know, as Christians, we're trying to climb into the light of God. We, we were trying to get out of this dark hole of fallenness, mm -hmm. but it's like this slippery slope. It's like, what do we hold on to? And suddenly I found like I was equipped. I was equipped because I had understanding. I had I loved this person that I was reading about. I was more able to love God. I knew it's important to love God, but now I was more able to, and I felt equipped. And it was almost like being on a rock climbing wall where boom, 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 boom. Suddenly you've got all these handles and you can just kind of glide your way. And, yeah. and of course, while I'm talking about that climbing wall to mention this grace, we, we're not climbing on our own right we're not climbing out of our fallenness there's this spiritual safety harness jesus is at the top of the wall and as soon as we make even the tiniest effort to believe in him this harness is strapped on us 
and we are in his safe arms and he does the heavy lifting. Yes. He's just yes. asking us to invest obediently, humbly, come on, come to me, keep coming to me. I'm going to keep lifting you, but keep coming, keep reaching, just believe, believe, you know, the believing is like these spiritual hands that are reaching higher and just holding on. And, and I think when we see his life and believe in him, suddenly there's this inner transformation that it's easier to do all those things. Mm -hmm. It really just, that's how it worked for me. And I'm hoping that, that you have the same experience. It sounds like it's, it did. I, I didn't, you know, the, the enemy had my ear for so long. And, and the truth is, I, Jesus, as I saw him before, um, was mixed in with so many lies, mm. you know. And like I said, I, I, I have to go back through your book again because there were so many nuggets. There were so many things that um, gave me practical, uh, because not only did you, dissect this a little bit and talk about jesus life but you applied it to our walk today you know right. and, and who we are who how that applies to us today yes. you know because we live in a, a social media world right now we can be anything and everything we want to be on facebook and and whatever other platforms are out there right and yep. uh I have to be very careful because that was that trap for me before Facebook came. I was a preacher's kid and I knew what people expected from me. So I was too busy trying to please them and give them what they wanted to see. Right. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. What I want now is an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what Christian Boland thinks of me or my decision. Right. What, what matters is, what does Jesus think? What does God think? Right. And putting my faith in him. Uh, I found that it was uh, something else I found really interesting was the relationships in Jesus life, you know, and how he, how that models for us because uh, my restoration came through the relationships that God brought into my life, you know? Yeah. Miraculous but, ones. But Jesus' relationships were so important to him, you know, and he Absolutely. and how he modeled that for yeah. us. How it's valuable, you know, that it's valuable. And I want to encourage people who are listening today. This is not just um, this is what I like about your book. It's not it's not over my head. It's not over your head too, too deep where you can. But it it gives you information, but it but it also gives you the story of Jesus, you know, and it, oh, yeah. you're, it's... you're telling who he is. And so what I, I encourage, if you want a deeper relationship with God and with Christ, this is this is an awesome tool to gain that perspective that you don't have because, um, you know, perspective is is everything. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always sensitive to not sounding like a, a salesperson. Um, but, you know, I, I did sales training uh, with an organization. And one guy said something to me that was really important. He said, you know, what, when, you're, when you're persuading someone to take action on something that is truly, genuinely in their best interest, that's not selling you're doing that person a favor you're yes, influencing yes. them for something that's going to benefit them and in that particular line of work that they were doing they, they were they were they had a very important valuable service and that kind of changed my thinking and that's absolutely what what we're doing uh is you know i know that god put into my heart the design of this learning experience is what this is to learn to get to know Jesus. You know, a lot of us have stories that are in a uh, little, like you said, you'd heard a lot of bits and pieces about Jesus, but very few people have really experienced his life from birth to resurrection in a relatively short time, a cohesive string, like a guided tour, where at 
certain intervals, the, the tour guide says, hey, did you see that? This is what right, I mean, right. this is how it happened. And here's how you might want to think about it in our modern Twitter era, era that we live in. And that making connections to modern life very much helps to make it practical um, in ways that a lot of people haven't really considered before. Of, of You know, when Jesus said, come follow me, often that's kind of like vague, like, what? How? I'm not really right. sure. Well, no, you really can understand. Come follow me. It makes sense. Yes. Yes. And I encourage. So I started off uh, reading audible books. And so I have a lot of friends who listen to my podcast that they're not great readers. So mm -hmm. first off, I want to tell you guys, um, he, you narrate your own book in here, correct? I, I do. You're, yes. He's narrating it. And I'll, you're you're better than me. I couldn't I couldn't narrate mine because my I would have just cried through my whole story, and, <laughs> and no one would have known known what it is. But what I like about you, you have you have a great speaking voice. You know, oh good. And so I it it has my interest. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my guy my my friends who listen to you like Audible book, get the Audible book, but get the paperback book too and read alongside of it because there and I, I keep saying nuggets there there there's so much applications that you're you're putting in that when you're talking about him these applications is that you're applying to today you know and i'm just i'm telling you i was sitting there going i need to write this down i need to write i yeah. need this and then i was yeah. just like oh, you're, gonna, you're gonna order the book well. and we're gonna go through this again because you know well. i was kind of I, I couldn't stop and and soak in a lot of it because I wanted to be prepared for our 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 show today, our podcast right. today, talking about it. But I'm going to tell you, it, it it makes Jesus come come alive, and that's what I that's what I want. And my I want Jesus to be alive in yes. me, yes. you know. And this is a great tool to do that because um, understanding that and then you taking it and applying it to the the world that we're living in today makes such a big difference yeah you know, because a lot of people have a hard time they know things but they have a hard time applying it to themselves yeah for sure can i share one of the coolest stories in there briefly please you know there's one story that's not very well known in the scriptures and that's where uh Peter and, and Jesus are in Capernaum. The story is just about the two of them. And there's just a few verses. And this, this official, this Jewish official comes and says, hey, doesn't, doesn't your master pay this certain tax? And Peter says, oh, yeah, sure he does. And then Jesus reprimands him in a certain way when he comes in the house. And the way he says it is a very cryptic answer. I don't think almost anybody would have any chance of understanding what that means without some significant support from Bible scholars who can really break down all the words. But once you see it, it suddenly becomes extremely meaningful. The symbolism is like, really? All of that? I mean, it makes so much sense. But it also, to your point, shows out the compassion and wisdom of Jesus, who never let people get away with stuff that was not in their best interest, right. that was right. promoting a lie or falsehood. But he did it in a loving way. And the miracle of the story is when Jesus says, OK, now to get us out of this jam, I want you to go cast a line in the sea. And when you pull up that fish, there's going to be a coin in his mouth and you're going to give that to the tax guy. And the symbolism of that is so much like we talked about with the grace before. That Peter was in a jam. Now, it's a very simple situation. He said something foolish. But on a much grander scale, we have done things that are devastatingly foolish yeah. and have yeah. debted us and have put us in spiritual slavery to the devil, who is very real. And in a similar way, Jesus can say, I just trust my words here. Go do this. Just this little bit of thing that I'm asking you to do. And you know what? It's all it's, it's really going to go away. And you can come yeah. back and I'm going to, I'm going to hug you. 
I mean, it's there's so much symbolism in that little story, and it's such a cool story, but it, it speaks to everything that you've been saying about relationship, love, grace, forgiveness, restoration. Peter could look Jesus in the eye again, and and Jesus emerges as the, the Messiah who who's running things. He's the creator. Yeah. He's the God of the earth. He showed Peter that he rules. He knows the fish of the sea. He can put a coin in his mouth. I mean, it is a mind-boggling cool story that is all brought to life through, you know, just through careful analysis and, and, and proper research. So I did a lot of research. It's based on sound, you know, Bible scholar research, and, and there's there's pretty significant notes in it. So I hope you like that story too. It's one of my favorites. I do that because that story resonates with me because I didn't feel like after what after after my uh fall, my sin, my whatever you want to call it, um it was hard to look at it was hard to think that God how could God love me? You know, uh, a good friend of mine looked at me uh, in the mist, right when all this happened, he, and he said, he, and he tried to reach me and he said, Mike, what does Jesus see when he sees you? And all I could say was, was nothing good, you know? Yeah. And I see the miracle you're talking about now that you just, that story, it resonates with me because now I'm seeing that I'm seeing those miracles that only God can do in in my life and it 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 comes out of you you said a couple things obedience believing yeah and having trust yes you know that, that's right those three things are all captured in this rich greek word pisteo which is translated as believe but you're right it is this rich combination of all three yeah and if we can grasp that, we can grow so much more than what what than where we've been. And and that was me. I, I'm 56 years old, and and I'm going to tell you this today. And I don't know it. People may not understand this. I'm thankful for everything I went through today because i i had to go through those to see who jesus is today in my life and to become that man that i that jesus wanted me to be yeah. you know and the the joy of it is jesus would jesus loved me uh, the, you know it's like the story of the prodigal son whatever you want to say mm -hmm. uh but but God, he didn't come to condemn me, he came to save me. Right. And he wants, he, I knew Jesus loved me. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. But now I know it. Yeah. You know, now I know I it. I've experienced it. I, I didn't feel, feel his love. I, I'm totally with you. For the longest time, I just knew it, but I, I didn't feel it. It took a long time for me to get there as well yeah and it's a different feeling uh there's hey we're here to learn that the darkness from the light right, right. That, that's part of our earthly experience and and the, the deeper your darkness the more you savor the light and i don't think i've ever read anything that equals what you've got in your book to, to illustrate the, the depth of darkness that you experienced it was sobering and you know praise god and glory glory to God for being there for all of us. Um, could I share one more thought that Please. could be useful for folks? This is not in my book, but I've written a blog post about this concept. Captivity is something that I have described in the book. There's some section on that. And it's such an important concept. We talk about Jesus saving us. And the natural question is, save from what? You know, we talk about him redeeming us, but I think that there's a very fuzzy notions out there in, in the church in general about what is this being saved from? 
And it's often not until we have a really extreme bitter experience with captivity, like you described in your book, that we begin to see, wow, I need saves because I am like hopeless, you know, right now. And to a lesser extent, all of us experience captivity, but we may not, we may not recognize it. Well, here's another interesting thing that the, the Greek word doulos, did you know that Paul introduces himself as a doulos of Christ, which the only legitimate translation of doulos into English is slave. It's not servant or anything less. It is a straight up bought and purchased slave. And that may sound so strange. It did to me, but right. the, the scriptures talk about us being bought with a price. We are owned. All, all humankind is already bought with a price through Christ's atonement. We are now slaves. That's the definition of slave is you're owned by someone else to Christ. And I mean, if anybody's intrigued by this concept, that might sound horrifying, but there's a post. Do, go ahead, do a Google search on uh, slave of Christ, and you'll see this post by me. It comes up in like the top three results on Google. I'm going to put it. I'll, I'll put a link to it okay. in, in here for us. It, it's a fascinating concept once you understand that uh, – and, and I credit um, John MacArthur, who did the, a lot of the research that I leveraged. I credit him freely in the post and quote him in some places. But this beautiful thing is we know as, as humans that slavery is an awful thing. Right. We, and we experience when, spiritual darkness when we're slaves to, to Satan. We know how ugly and painful and awful that can be. But when we are owned by Christ, he's a whole different kind of master. Mm -hmm. You know, being slaves by a good master is not a bad thing because they feed you, give you three meals a day. They care about your best interest. They're, they actually want to develop you to free you someday. That's what it means to be a slave to a really good guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great deal. It's like the best deal ever. And once we understand that, no wonder Paul, I mean, Bible translators didn't want to render the word slave. They just couldn't bring themselves to do it. But the only correct translation is that Paul stood up and said, hey, I'm Paul. I'm a slave of Christ. Can you believe that? <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And, and I was reading a little bit of this uh, before we came on here with it. And I'll I'll be honest with you, I I want to I want to invite you back um, more. I One, love to. You, you have another book out there that um, I, I'm going to order, and awesome. I, I would like to discuss that book with you as well. But I but I do want to talk to you more about. Um, the intentionality of being a Christian, but I, I would like to dissect your book a little bit more with you too. Uh, a few more stories, uh, sure. like you shared today, um, uh, that we can to. make applicable, uh, to our walk with Christ, because the best thing that we can offer to someone is, um, that relationship with Christ, you know? Yes. And I feel yes. like you gave me a gift in writing this book because it gave me, a, and I and I'm I'm going to tell you it really did. It gave me a lot of different insights um, that I had not put together before. Oh, you know, praise God! Wow, and thank you. And that's why I, that's why I have to get a highlighter out. I have to get it, and I have to to go back through it and mark it up and. And this will be one, um, one of those books uh, that I will read at least once a year, um, if not more, because it's it's going to help. It's already helping me in my personal walk with God. And isn't that That's what it's about? It is. It is absolutely. 
when Christ becomes part of us, and, and I use the analogy of a faucet. You know, imagine a faucet over my head that when I turn the faucet wide open, you know, Christ said, I'm the living water. So when I turn the faucet wide open, that living water can come into me and change me and fill me and satisfy me. I feel alive spiritually. And the valve is controlled through the intentional believing. We make the choice. It's an intentional thing. It's not a check the box one day. I, yeah, sure, I believe in Jesus. It's I believe in the way of a believe, obey, and trust, like you reviewed just a moment ago. And when we turn open that valve, this water flows into our soul, and we can feel it. I feel different since I started doing that. It's changed me. It saved me from darkness. I was in a very dark place, too. If you go to my website, you know, rchristianboland.com or hislifeandmine.com, my story, if you go to the about section, my story is on there, and it's, it's pretty dark, too. It doesn't, doesn't equal, come close to what you described. Um, and I'm, uh, but there was, some, there was a dark episode there that, that uh, this pivotal awareness came to me that, that triggered the transformation from darkness into light, from captivity into freedom. These things are very real to me. They're not just spiritual words and theology to me. These are, I experience these things. I would love to have you back on and have you share that, share your testimony with us. Well, I'll be, I'll be happy to do that. Michael, this is such a pleasure to connect with you. I, I think God is going to bless your ministry in a way that is, is incredible. It's just, it's just beginning, but I, I felt such a spirit in talking with you today. I can't even tell you. And uh, God bless I feel the you same way. Your analogy you just went through with the spigot, the water, um, that, I love that. I you just brought me joy today because I did. That's me. That's where I'm at, and I love that you you said that because I can I I can accept that in my own life right now. You know yeah. because I'm feeling that and that God's filling me. I once filled myself with so much negativity and 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 other stuff, and now I just feel like. God has just, he's opened that valve up for me yeah. and I'm overflowing yes. with this joy. I have never had, I thought I've had joy in my life. I have never had joy until this year. I mean, I, yeah. the, the, you can't express it to someone who hasn't experienced this, yeah. but there is a joy. And some of my listeners that are out there that, you know, there is a joy that you can have, but it does take work you, and, it, and it takes a desire to want to experience because God's not going to force it on you. Yeah. But God will meet you where you are. And no yeah. matter what anybody labels you or calls you or you, it don't matter because I am who God has called me to be. And I am enjoying that. And I really enjoy that analogy. I can't tell you how that fills me because, you know, it's, it's great when you can look at yourself and you can say, Hey, that's what I'm, that's what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. That's what yes. I'm experiencing. And that is exactly what I'm experiencing right now. Well, so, that's, that's a beautiful thing, brother. It that is. is beautiful. And, and, well, and you want to find anything that gives you joy and, and, and yeah. builds you up. And that, I got that today with you. I appreciate it. I'm going to put a link in here, guys, that uh, for his book, uh, his website, the the article he just talked about too. Um, awesome. I just, I really want to encourage you all, to, he, he, Christian. You really have a way of um, expressing things and, and telling it that wonderful uh, makes wonderful. it, you know, where someone like me can can grab that truth and find hope and joy. Wow. And Praise I God. All glory it. to him. Yes. I, I thank you for sharing that and this opportunity to just spread God's word and to help people who are hungry. We're all hungry. We all need it. We need to support each other. And the more we give and share like this, then we're just blessed in the process. So I just feel so blessed to be part of this today. I really do. And I look forward well, to receiving you. a link. I know you said it's going to go live tonight. I'm excited. I'll put it out as soon as I get it. I'll watch for it. 
Awesome. I tell you, I, I can't think of a better first guest to have on this show than you. And um, I'm looking forward to many more uh, yeah. uh, times with you on here. And Sign me up. So, well, everyone, <laughs> thank you for listening to us today on, on uh, this new show on air. Let's talk. And um, until next time, just keep being intentional. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.